Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Club Junkie Podcast. Hopefully you're having a great week. Another Thursday's here. We're to the middle of June, U.S. Open week. It's insane. It's crazy. This year's just flying by. It's going by way too fast. So I need to slow down. I need to play more golf. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just going by way too fast. This is crazy. So, again, hopefully you guys are having a good one. Before we get into today's show, I want to let you know this episode brought to you by Titleist and the brand new Pro V1 Golf Balls. To be your best today, you have to outperform the player you were yesterday. For some, it might be breaking 80. For others, it might be breaking the course record. And for all of us, it's playing a golf ball we know will help us get the most out of our game. The new Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X are the most advanced to date and will help reward your best swings like never before. Both models are longer, even more consistent, and feature unrivaled control. The Pro V1 is the best combination of distance, spin, and feel in the game and delivers a more penetrating ball flight, where Pro V1X flies a little higher, spins a bit more in the short game, while still giving you low spin on your longer shots to maximize your distance. Find out more about the new Pro V1 and Pro V1X, including which is the best choice for you at Titleist.com. So, yeah, I've been playing, uh, playing got a lot of the Pro V1X actually still. It's still my, my, my ball, so uh, check that one out, especially if somebody needs a little height. You know, look at his little height, you don't want to change up the clubs. Try, try, try a new ball. It's always interesting how a ball can really affect, uh, you know, some of the parameters of your shots. But anyway, hopefully you guys are having a good one. I've uh, been pretty good. I've been playing some golf. I haven't been playing good golf, uh, unfortunately, but I have been playing. I uh, I've been getting out. I got out. Uh, I'm gonna get up on Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna play with my dad. Uh, I guess Father's Day ish, even though uh, <laughs> we don't really do a whole lot for Father's Day. But we'll go out and play uh, Saturday morning at the old Bella Vista. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I've been playing a little bit, uh, elsewhere league last week was tough. Uh, I, man, I just, I, I absolutely struggled. I just could not hit a shot to save my life. And I think what was happening was basically, yeah, I was just sliding my hips forward as, uh, as I was hitting shots and I was just all over the place. I mean, it was two way miss hitting stuff thin. I had my early extension going. I mean, you name it, I was doing it. And I think I counted three actual solid golf shots uh that i hit i think the whole round i shot 44 uh i four putted uh a par three which is i mean i I haven't done that and i haven't done that since i played oakland hills and it was a green that was just absolutely diabolical um i basically got to uh the second par three i hit a pretty poor i want to say it was like it was like 160 downwind or something like that i hit eight iron hit it like thin off the toe and uh, which was kind of like my miss all day and it kind of had this little weak weak draw but it ended up on the front of the green uh the left side of the green it was on the front and the pin was kind of in the middle middle back so i had a long putt but nothing too crazy and uh it has a decent amount of break from left to right so hit that putt it wasn't too bad i left it a couple feet short you know i left it like three feet short which i again i left putt short all day for some reason um so left it short and then uh got up there to and you know, had I think three feet. You know, let's call it three feet. It wasn't a whole lot. Uh, burned it right by, uh, and hit a bye by like another three feet. You know, just hit it right through the break. Everything, uh, missed it on that high side. Went right by, right by. Came back and lipped that one out. So that was my third. Then uh, you know, tapped in for my fourth putt. So it was not a. Uh, not a great, uh, not a great putting experience there. So it's pretty tough when you hit a par three and one and make five. That's never, uh, never good. But uh, I just, yeah, I mean, it was just an absolute, uh, absolute struggle. Yeah, because I hit one, I had two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it was five. I was, I was, I was like, oh, did I miss a putt there? You know, it's bad when you're counting up the strokes and you're like, did I miss a putt? Because I felt like I didn't have enough there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, just that. And then you know, I was hitting the ball left. Uh, and then I get to like the 15th hole off the tee and I just have a five iron to lay up because there's water in front of the green. And I mean, I just, I mean, fall back on my right side, the right shoulder dips and I just hit this big old weak cut, uh, or weak slice, hits the trees, fall down, falls down, I have to punch out. I mean, it was just that night. I mean, the couple holes that I did play well, um, you know, I, I, I'd have a shot that I got away with something and that was, was pretty much it. The 16th hole is about probably my best hole. I hit, uh, Hit a decent drive, hit it over into the right rough, uh, just like a little kind of a ball that faded a little more than I, I thought it would, um, and then hit uh, uh, kind of a thin low on the face shot onto the green, but it made the green rolled up uh, to kind of the middle uh, and made a two putt there for par. So I made a few pars, um, but most of them were bogeys, and it was just like bogeys rolling the whole way. Um, yeah, I just uh, it, it was one of those struggles, you know. Even if you know hit a good hit a good tee shot, nice big draw on the par five. 
uh, which is like hole 13. Had a big old draw. It was great. Just rolled into the rough. Had good look at the green um, to get there in two. I only had like 200 yards. It was dead into the wind. And that hole there is, is typically a really short par five. Like borderline should be a par four because they never use the back tee box. They just never sent them back there. I don't know if it was a speed-up play or what, but um, they have two really long tee boxes, and the one, uh, they just never put the blue... And we play the blue tees. There's a set of blacks, but we play the blues. Uh, and then there's whites and then the up tees. Uh, and then, uh, which I think are red. But anyway, the blues are always, like, way up on that hole. And that day, they had them, way, you know, they had them back on the second tee box, uh, like the middle of the second tee box, which was probably about the longest it's it's ever played it was into the wind uh, but it still had a good drive i had like two i don't remember what it was it was like two something there um so i basically had uh a hybrid i oh no i had yeah like two something uh or just inside at 200 i had my pulled the ping for a uh, ping eye crossover out and just absolutely bladed it and it just ran up in front of the green i mean it wasn't like horrible it wasn't death but it was like good shot followed by a poor shot and it was just that uh all day so um and then I think I hit a bad wedge, and I mean, I think I made five, but it was just, it was tough. So, not good, but, you know, what can you do? That's just the way it is, and uh, we'll keep going. And then today, went out and hit about 118 balls out my backyard into my net <laughs> with the full swing kit uh, out there hitting some balls, because I did want to, I've, I've been hitting the, um, the first thing I'll talk about today, which is going to be the Mitsubishi, the new Mitsubishi Tensei. What is it? I, I always pronounce it wrong. Tensei 1K Pro Blue. I always usually say like Pro Blue 1K or whatever, but the Mitsubishi Tensei 1K Pro Blue, which is the brand new one out. Uh, we've got, you know, the white came out first, which I think I reviewed like, man, it feels like two years ago. Uh, and then they came out of the orange, uh, right around the same time as the 1K Black. Uh, the 1K Black, of course, doesn't have the pro name in it, and that's the one that you've seen a lot of uh, OEM use. And now the 1K Blue finally is out. Uh, so you have white is low launch, low spin, black, low launch, low spin, orange is supposedly low launch, low spin, where orange previously in the AV series, I think it was mid launch, uh, low spin. And now you have blue, which is the mid launch option. And, uh, it's labeled on their site as mid spin, which is interesting. Usually, uh, the blue version you'll see is a, a little lower spin, uh, but Hey, it's, uh, it's out. And I think a lot of people are excited for this one. The one K white, uh, pro white did really, really well. The pro orange, uh, has done really well. And a lot of guys, I think like the black, uh, that have, you know, got it in, um, you know, the Titleist irons uh, or Titleist woods. Cause that was what it was. One of the stock options, uh, in there. So a lot of, a lot of success, uh, with the Tensei, uh, the new Tensei one K stuff. Uh, and it's been a long time we've been waiting on the blue, but it is here. And it's the one I was kind of excited for as well because it kind of fits me much better than the white uh the, you know like i said the white being low launch low spin this is that mid launch which is you know what i'm looking for i, I typically may play the mid launch stuff i really like the 1k i mean it's got that similar tensei look where it's kind of black tip fades into kind of a raw carbon uh in the middle and then you have your blue band uh, up near the handle and then your kind of woven uh, carbon fiber fabric uh, right under the grip and the 1k fabric uh, under the grip is just a, a really cool look and i love the little 1k carbon uh logo they have uh, on it i don't know if i can get it on camera here if you're watching on uh on youtube but uh yeah the little 1k carbon logo i think is really cool always been a big fan i mean the tensei stuff is simple uh but i like it the tensei logo on the shaft is kind of this holographic uh look to it when you get it in the sun uh, and then the same thing with the one and the one it says one K series, but, uh, yeah, but a, a shaft that's kind of packed with tech. Uh, it's basically got uh, boron in it as well. It doesn't say like boron tip, like the old CK blue pro or CK pro blue. Uh, but it does, uh, have boron in it. Uh, it has their X link tank X link tech, which also, uh, removes, uh, or I think, you know, limits how much a, uh, a resin is in here, keeps it more of a carbon content. Uh, and then the 1K fiber is basically a really, really thin uh, carbon that that runs uh, in, in the shaft that uh, is supposed to be extremely lightweight, and uh, it's a really tight weave and more consistent, so uh, that 1K fiber is in there as well. So a lot of tech uh, goes into this thing, and uh, I was excited to get it. So I've got a 60X, which I know when you start hearing you know, club head speeds and all that, should I replay, really be playing an X? Eh, probably not, but... Um, definitely the blue is a little more lively than the white, just in terms of feel, uh, as you'd expect, 
Very smooth, uh, easy to load. It's got a really kind of powerful kick and impact. Uh, just a shaft that uh, you know that makes you feel like you're getting the most uh, out of it. You know, the, the kind of the most potentials you can out of it. Uh, but a really good feel. I, I liked it. I played it in my uh, Stealth Two, uh, standard Stealth Two, Taylor made Stealth Two, and then I've also hit it in my TSR. I titled this TSR Two in both heads. I uh, really like the feel of it. It loads really easily uh, and unloads. Uh, I would say it definitely isn't play as stout as the CK Blue. Uh, the CK series, I think, to me, felt like it was a little stiffer overall. Uh, this feels like it's a little more playable uh, and a little softer to flex, but still, uh, you know, for a 60X, it's still uh, it's still firm. When you go to bend it, it's still got uh, a little resistance. It's definitely not the you know the softest thing out there. And like all mine, uh, I'm rocking the All Fit tip. Uh, on these as well so uh, no it's not coming up there but rock and all fit tips just like everything else uh, and the nice thing is i could take this and put it in you know my tsr2 head and then immediately take another shaft and put it in there to kind of compare uh, so i was uh kind of comparing these to some uh some other shaft as, as well and it was uh, a good time so I've, I've got this thing out on the course out on the course uh you know when i say i hit some good drives that was the shaft that was here uh the first uh you know, I've taken it out a couple times, uh, but those two good drives I talked about uh, at St. Clair Shores, both with this, with the Stealth 2 head, and then, uh, you know, hit it as well uh, with, and then I played a nine hole with it with the uh, the TSR2, and then hit, I don't know how many balls uh, with it <laughs> in my backyard today. Like I said, I hit a lot of 118 balls, meaning some seven irons and some drivers, so uh hit a lot of golf balls uh, up, uh outside the in the net which was uh, which was nice but was hitting some good shots with it and uh yeah it's you know in terms of launch uh i you know consider mid launch mid spin i would say mid launch is pretty darn close it may launch a little bit higher than that for me on good shots uh if anything kind of goes to the right it definitely can get up uh, just a little bit higher so for me i would say that this kind of falls right about ventus blue territory uh the standard blue uh, i think it launches a little higher than the TR Blue, and I think it kind of, you know, li like regular Ventus Blue, I think it kind of goes in between, uh, you know, TR Red and TR Blue, and it kind of falls in between there uh, as well. But this launches to, for me, just a touch higher than TR Blue, very similar to uh, the OG Ventus Blue is what, uh, what I was kind of finding in terms of launch. Uh, and honestly, uh, once I... <laughs> Was hitting it on a launch monitor. It was very close in terms of spin and some other factors as well. But, uh, but really a, a good shaft. Like I said, like the feel. Uh, thought it felt really smooth, uh, really responsive as well. When you did miss it off the face, I mean, you know, some of the club head plays into the responsiveness, and uh, you know, the TSR two would be in that all titanium uh, head, all titanium face. Uh, unlike the Stealth two, you do get a good feel for where you, you know, uh, where you make contact on the face. Stability is really good. Um, you know, I've hit maybe one shot that went hard left but that was again my swing everything else is pretty straight for being is a little more lively shaft uh it, it actually is a little harder to turn over than i thought uh when i kind of first you know you set it down you give the waggle test you give it a few practice swings uh, you may think that oh it's got a little softer feel to it uh you know it doesn't feel quite as, as stout and stuff as some other shafts but it's still actually it still resisted hitting big draws. I mean, it, it, everything that I hit, uh, I hit, you know, one left on, on 10. I hit, uh, you know, that kind of a, a bigger draw, which, which I was kind of playing for um, on the uh, on, on that par 5. But then a lot of the other shots just were straight and even had, like, a little bit of fades to them. So this is a shaft that, uh, you know, even if you're a bigger hitter who needs a little height, I don't think you have to be worried about uh, this thing going hard left on you. I think it's got a, it's stable enough, especially, uh, you know, in the tip section all that where it's going to hang on uh even if you put uh, a little harder swing on it uh it seems to keep up really really well uh you know out out back uh, in the net of course hitting balls i always get into that kind of you know uh what do you call it uh, uh driving range mode uh, where you're really hitting it hard or trying to hit it hard or you start getting into that process because you know you know the next ball's there you don't have to worry about oh you know does this uh, uh I, you only have one ball you only have one shot so I was kind of going after a little harder, getting the tempo was getting a little quick, and honestly, it, it felt really stable. Uh, definitely feels uh, a little stouter in the tip section, or I mean the handle section, especially compared to say Aventus Blue. Uh, there's definitely a, a, it's definitely got more reinforcement and is stiffer there. Uh, and I feel like uh, kind of where it kicks more is is kind of down more, a little more near the tip, uh, you know. But 
again, extremely stable. Even when you hit it, you know, low heel, high toe, anywhere on the face there, uh, you're going to get a reasonably straight uh, shot out of it and, and reasonably good performance. I mean, some of that's also going to depend on the head with those miss hits, uh, but those uh, there are going to uh, perform really, really well. So I, I was kind of really impressed on course with it. Um, you know, in terms of, of length, I think it hangs out with anything out there. It seemed like all the holes I played were like into the wind a little bit. Uh, so, you know, in terms of distance, I was never in a spot I've never been in, but that isn't, you know, shaft wise its fault. I think it's just, you know, one of those, those couple days where you just, it seemed everything was into the wind. So distance wise, I think it's really good. Uh, again, extra, some extra launch without being, uh, kind of that noodle feel or that, uh, that non, you know, that loose feel It is very, very tight. Um, when I hit it out, uh, on the, on the, uh, uh, you know, to get some numbers, just so I could have uh, a few numbers for you guys. I was hitting my TSR2 head and uh, carry on average. And again, I tell you guys, I don't really delete a whole lot of shots. I mean, unless I really hit it stupid thin and the carry was like 100 and, you know, 80 yards. I mean, maybe I'll remove that. But uh, for the most part, I'm leaving stuff in uh, just because that's, you know, that's my game. That's how I, am, you know, who I am. So uh, carry yardage average 240. Uh, the longest, uh, and, and they were all super consistent. I mean, I had 250 in there, uh, but, you know, you had a 250 or a couple 250s, uh, but then you went anywhere, you know, a bunch of 245, 242, 248, 248, 244, um, you know, and then I had a 230, a 230, I had a 219, uh, so you kind of hit that one, uh, we hit that one a little low, um, on the, you know, a little low and no loft on it. But everything on there was really consistent. Uh, so all in the kind of the 245, 248 range. Uh, so average of 240 and really that 219 really knocked it down. I bet if I deleted that one, uh, the numbers would go uh, substantially higher. So carry 240, you get into the spin rate. Uh, and this one here, uh, and I think I kind of felt like the kit was a little bit high on everything today uh, out there hitting balls. I was hitting a Bridgestone E6. Uh, that I had four of those out there. Uh, they're just kind of in my shag bag. I've got a handful of stuff. And, and so I was hitting uh, four of uh, E6s and uh, spin rate on average 2961. And it was pretty tight. I mean, I went basically, there was a low of, of just under 2100, so 2094, uh, and a high of 39. 86 which is kind of a, a big flare to the right it wasn't a great swing but um it was there but everything kind of stayed in the kind of mid to high uh, twos a couple that that, that breached just over 3,000, but everything was kind of in that 2800 to 2700 range uh for the most part uh and, and everything was kind of high like I, I put in um you know that vent is blue just to kind of hit next to it because i was like these are going to be similar numbers and the number there was 2805. So the Vendas Blue spun about 150 RPMs less, uh, you know, on the same amount of shots, which, uh, you know, like I said, was pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, but 2961, so it is a, a, you know, a touch higher spinning. But I also, you know, just to give you kind of a reference, I was hitting, um, where was it? I was hitting a, a Stealth 2 with the, with the Vendas Black TR. And, I mean, I had... A couple shots that were all you know in the high two nines with that as well so i think overall uh the kit but i mean it's apples to apples if it, if it was high everything was a little high so don't take that number for you know to quote it that oh my gosh it's going to spin that high uh, but i think this thing is not considered you know the lowest spinning shaft in the world you know you're not going to sit there and compare this to uh some of the crit you know the the 1k white 1k black when it comes to spin this is probably going to have just a little bit more spin to it but still offers some really good you know good good shots ball speed on it uh pretty solid at 145.5 um you know most of those shots there you know there was nothing that dipped that 130 a, a 137.5 was my worst uh, and everything else was between 144 and 149.0 for ball speed so i know that's not crazy fast uh but for me, it just kind of shows some consistency, and uh, it was you know very similar again to uh, to Ventus Blue. Um, let me look at uh, where is it? let's go to uh, Smash Factor. So Smash Factor is one four seven. So I mean, pretty solid across the board. I mean, there was a, a handful of five O's that jumped up. Everything was kind of there was that one again that one two nineteen that brought down that was one three five. But I mean, one four sevens, one four nines, one four eights. Everything there was was really really good. Uh, so ball speed is easily kept up uh, with this. And then launch angle uh, for this bad boy was twelve two. So I was playing uh, a, a what is it? Is it ten or ten and a half degree titleless head? Uh, so the ten degree head there and twelve point two was uh, was my launch. And for reference. 12.0 uh, was my average launch with a Ventus Blue. So uh, very similar there. 
Uh, I kind of like the stiffer handle feeling or se handle section feeling of this compared to the Ventus Blue a little bit. Um, but a, a really, really good shaft. I think uh, numbers wise, um, you know, I don't necessarily do it justice like some other, you know, like YouTubers and stuff like that. Uh, but their overall performance of it, I think, was really, really solid. I think it fits into the Tensei lineup really well. And I think if you're somebody who needs, you know, something with mid-launch and maybe just a touch of spin, but you want to have control, you want to have that smooth feel, uh, you want to keep the ball speed up. I mean, this is this this is a great option to uh, to try. Uh, I think for you know some really strong players, getting this in like a heavier weight, they make it in a seventy and an eighty uh, to put it in like a a fairway wood. I think for some some bigger hitters who who need a little launch off the deck or whatever, uh, this could be a really good option uh, that offers that with still offering a good amount of stability uh, for those uh, th those bigger swingers. But um, a really good shaft. Like I said, this is the. Uh, the, the the 60x which comes in at 63 grams uh they do make a tx version of this uh which I, I would bet would be fairly fairly stout but 63 grams um it's got a the the torque number on it is three 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 uh it's got a little bigger diameter uh butt section at at, at uh, three or 6.32 uh which is a little larger uh and then uh I'm sorry, the tip length of three. So the torque is 3.9. I apologize. I was kind of scrolling down. So torque is 3.9. And then, uh, of course, a mid kick point. So um, overall, I'm really impressed. I like it a lot. I can't wait. I, I want to hit it in a couple other heads. I definitely want to throw it into uh, um, the Stealth 2 Plus head. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, and the, uh, the the Aerojet head and stuff like that. So I want to hit in a few more heads that I haven't had a, ch a chance to do yet. Uh, but I, I was playing at 45 inches. Uh, that's basically what I cut this bad boy at. No tipping, uh, straight in, 45 inches. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, been really solid. So really impressed with the 1K Blue. I really like it. Uh, I think a lot of people, when they get their hands on it, are going to uh, appreciate it as well. But overall, a, uh, a pretty solid uh, offering for Mitsubishi here. And uh, really excited to kind of like some, play some more with this thing and, and hit it in a few, uh, few other heads. So um, if you're looking for something kind of mid-launch, uh, definitely check out the new... Tensei 1K Pro Blue. I think it's a, a good option. I know it's a lot of us have been waiting on it. So get out and uh, check it out. If you go to mca-golf.com, mca dash i guess or hyphen uh, golf.com you can go check out all the specs uh, and all the tech into the tensei 1k pro blue uh, but really uh, a, a pretty pretty great shaft and, uh, and and really excited to uh, to hit this thing some more so check it out when you get a, a chance uh, and uh, yeah it's uh, it's a solid one so uh, really good there and uh, before we get into uh, the next segment of the show what we're going to hit and you know talk about next I want to let you know also uh you know kbs has a brand new putter shaft the tour gps and gps graphite putter shaft so that's right kbs has a graphite putter shaft uh a brand new one it's a new era in kbs fitting to be able to bring the public their first graphite putter shaft so high performance premium crafted composite materials and fibers make sure it's extremely stable and accurate on the green super low torque and uh it results in minimal deflection uh through the stroke especially on longer putts so there's also a layer in there that uh, kind of removes some of that uh, unwanted vibration to enhance the feel of the putter the sound of the putter and all of that uh, so it's stiff 120 grams they don't have to add a lot of material to get the, the a lot of material for added weight to keep that stiffness and uh you know it's uh, basically increase the moi of your putters so go to kbsgolfshaft.com check out the kbs tour gps putter shaft uh, i've got one i'm gonna i just uh, got it dried up and gripped uh, today so that bad boy will be out on the course here very shortly and we'll talk a little bit about those as well so check out that uh, when you get a chance all right so uh, i had to take a quick break there if you uh if you follow me on instagram which is an easy plug here at club junkie pod um, you can uh, see that i bought built my daughter her set of uh, first set of golf clubs uh, i mean technically before she was born we bought her like a plastic set and every once in a while she'll want to hit, hit golf balls but she'll hit like two and then lose interest and walk away um and then just recently she told me and my or told my wife that she wanted to play golf with daddy and i was like okay well i bought a bunch of stuff like a bunch of junior shaft junior grips to build up uh, a set for her and when she said she wanted to play and then she told me she wanted to play and then i guess my wife said she told her again that she wanted to play um i was like all right get them done so i uh, i built up a set and uh, they're ready to go. So I built her a <clears throat> three wood slash driver, uh, a Hamna TR21 L big LB. So it's a, uh, a 14 degree 
titanium, larger, three wood head. I turned it up to 15. Um, and it's playing at, I think 26 inches is what it's, I think that's a long club in the back is 26 inches. And then I've got a Cobra Rad Speed 4 Hybrid in there that's like 25 inches. And then a PXG 0311 Gen 2T, a 7-iron, 9-iron, um, a Callaway MD5 or Jaws MD5 Wedge, 55 degree. And then a uh, P or PXG 0211 Clydesdale uh, Putter. So I think that's the shortest in the bag at like... 21 and a half inches something like that maybe maybe 22 it might be a similar length of the wedge but built her a little set and uh, they've got like these little junior shafts and uh and grips they're just like karma like kind of like tour velvets but karma uh, junior grips uh the shafts are cut so short though i still had to build up uh with a lot of tape the the shaft to get the grip to actually stick on there well but i think it was like four total layers two at the bottom four up top the butt ends were much bigger than the the bottom section so kept a little taper in there and built her a set so i had to run up there because she woke up from her nap and found the clubs uh i'd, I'd set them up there and she found them so she was kind of taking some swings and stuff which is pretty cute she's three so we're still a long way off to see if she's actually going to enjoy playing or want to play or anything like that but at least there's interest so I'm, I'm i'm good with that but uh and if you are following again if you want to follow me on instagram at club junkie pod uh wherever you're listening on your podcast or whatever please like subscribe whatever you got to do on podcasts it's it's you know all that stuff helps us the algorithm helps us get out there more and then if you're watching this on youtube uh, or want to uh golf the beer x radio is what you search and uh there is the club junkie in there so i record all these i'm just sitting at a desk but i'm i, I throw the products we're talking about up on the uh the screen and you can look at my uh not attractive face uh but uh anything there uh, if you can like subscribe all that it'd be awesome so i uh, appreciate everybody who does and everybody who does listen every week it seems uh you know I always get messages, and it's it's pretty cool. So, uh, and then thank you also again to everyone who was giving submitting questions uh, yesterday uh, on on Instagram. I always do a little Q and A, or I try to do it on Wednesdays. A ton of great questions. It was awesome. So, thank you again. And uh, yeah, so the second half of the show, we're going to talk about a new iron, one that you a forged one piece iron that you probably haven't really thought about uh, or haven't tried, or it's not really on your list, but maybe it should be um and that is going to be the tour edge exotics pro 723 so the pro 723 is their kind of one piece forged uh kind of fairly narrow sole uh, iron that they basically built for the better player so they make two kind of hollow body designs uh, under the exotics badge the c723 uh, and the E723, and those are going to be hollow body, thin face, kind of distance irons. Uh, and then uh, this one here, the Pro 723, is the one-piece forged better player's iron. So it's it's a little more compact. Uh, it's big for what it is. Uh, when you set it down to like a T, excuse me, a T100 or something like that, it's definitely a little bit larger, uh, just the overall blade size. But it has very little offset. Top top line is not razor thin, but it's pretty thin, and just has a good shape to it. It's it's a little longer heel to toe, uh, the blade is, and it's got a you know small cavity in the back uh, that's milled out, uh, and they milled out a section behind the face uh, to move some of that weight elsewhere, and then they fill it with a vibra vibra core, uh, kind of a, a rubber material to to dampen and improve the sound. So uh, all forge here. Really a good looking iron. Uh, it, it really is. They they've actually made their previous. Uh, I think it was called the EXS Pro uh, cavity back look really good. These look really good. Uh, some nice milling on the back. Uh, the face on it, it it is true chrome. So it'd be interesting. Uh, you know when you get out there in some really really bright light, uh, would you have uh, a little issues with glare? Uh, I haven't haven't had any problems with them yet. Uh, but we haven't had some. At least my golf days haven't really fallen on crazy bright days where I play early in, early enough in the morning where I miss most of that. Uh, so I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, if you're somebody who lives in like an extremely sunny area, you might notice it uh, a little bit more. Uh, but overall, good looking uh, iron there. And uh, the one knock that I will give to it, uh, it comes with a Dynamic Gold 105 uh, S300 shaft. And unfortunately, that's the only option. <laughs> they, when you go on their website, they list one shaft uh, and that is it. So 
a little interesting to me that uh, with a lot of the other products, you they have a handful of different shafts that you can uh, order stuff with. Uh, this one, why they only offer a 105 dynamic gold is, is interesting. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, you know, there's some players who would play this iron who are looking for heavier weights and just at least having an option like a KVS2 or a dynamic gold S300 or something, uh, X100 or whatever, uh, that would fit that profile of like, you know, the 120 plus gram uh, shaft weight, I think would do pretty well. But uh, the 105 is the only option, which is interesting. So uh, really nice set. They make... Uh, uh, in terms of irons, they basically make a three iron through an approach wedge or gap wedge, however you want to call it, uh, the one after the pitching wedge. Uh, they make the whole thing. And these are a little stronger lofted uh, than you would think for just being a, you know, player's forged cavity. Uh, so the pitching wedge plays off a, it plays off 44 degrees, uh, which is about a de at least a degree stronger than, than typically uh, most uh, irons in this category, but but kind of pushing two depending on uh, the iron, se or iron set you're comparing it to. Uh, the seven iron's 32 degrees, and the four iron's 22. So, a little stronger lofted, and it definitely shows. Uh, when I was hitting them uh, out there, they they are definitely long, um, but uh, but the looks are, are are really good. They I, I kind of like the slightly larger blade on it. It's got just a hair of offset, but it's really minimal. Uh, leading edge is pretty straight. It's got just a touch of radius to it. Nothing too much or uh, too bad. I like the top line size. I'll consider it like a mid or a medium size. In turn, when you look at uh, players' cavities, it's not razor thin like a T100. It's not super thick like some other irons uh, that are out there. Uh, it's kind of right in the middle, and I, I like it. It gives you gives me the confidence that you know, hey, there's a little bit of, of material here. If you don't hit it dead flush center, you're still going to be okay. Uh, the overall toe shape uh, is 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 a little rounded. Uh, it's it's not terribly square. It's a little more rounded, so it's got that little softer look to it. Uh, overall, a really pleasant look. Uh, I think they did a, a good design in designing it. Um, and then uh, yeah, when you look at uh, the the sole on it, it doesn't look like it has a absolute ton of bounce. It's pretty narrow. The leading edge does have a little bit of uh, you know kind of roundness to it. It's been softened up a little bit. Uh, so when you do uh, get into some of the softer conditions, uh, you're going to be all right. And then, uh, yeah, sole width uh, is is kind of progressively wider near the toe, thinner near the heel. But uh, but overall, nothing too. It's not razor thin, but it's also not uh, so wide where you're going to have any uh, uh, problems with turf interaction. Uh, turf interaction is pretty good uh, up here where it's really soft. Uh, that that kind of dulled or, or beveled leading edge uh, does kind of help uh, reduce a little bit of the divot size. It, it will still, I mean, if you get really crazy steep and get on top of it in, in, in some soft conditions, you can get down uh, and, and get a little, you know, get a, a fairly decent sized divot with it. Uh, so if you're a really steep swinger and you play in really soft conditions, uh, turf interaction, uh, you know, you're going to have to try them to see uh, what you like. Up here in Michigan, they're pretty good. Uh, unless it's a really, really, you know, soft day after some rain, uh, they, they perform really well. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you know they get in and out of the quick uh, turf or turf pretty quick. Uh, and the divot size they leave is, is is pretty. You know maybe just a hair bigger. Uh, you know a little bit bigger than say like a, a Strixon ZX7. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, deeper uh, than some of, like even the 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 PXG zero three one seven CBs. Maybe just a little bit. Uh, uh, they dig maybe just a little bit more than that. Those have just I think a little bit more bounce. Um, Tour doesn't give you the bounce number on it, so it, I, I can't say exactly, but when you hold them up and kind of look at them, they definitely look like they have a little less bounce to them than uh, than those uh, PXGs. But uh, overall, really good looking iron. I like the the, the shape. Uh, I like the little uh, longer blade size from from heel to toe. It's a little longer, a little stretched out. Uh, but it's overall bigger blade, so it doesn't look out of place. Sometimes you get those longer heel to toe blades, and they just look stretched. Uh, this one isn't one of those. It, it definitely still has a a very good look to it. Uh, sandblasted, uh, you know, groove section, uh, pretty traditional there, but uh, overall, just a, a good looking iron, a solid looking set of irons when you have them in the bag. Uh, you know, I think people would notice, and uh, they're 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 impressive looking, they're they're attractive. So, out of the course, uh, like I said, turf interaction is, is is pretty darn solid. Distance is, you know, I, I, at first it was sh kind of shockingly long. Um, I, I didn't realize they were a little bit stronger uh, than some other irons out there. But these are about as long as my Mizar Tours, which is pretty crazy. And those I've actually bent a little bit weak to play off like a 45 pitching wedge. Uh, and so they're, they're a little more traditional. Uh, so I was hitting kind of, again, hitting a bunch of shots uh, out there. But I've had these on the course. Uh, the feel of them is, is, is pretty good. They're, they're soft. 
Uh, they get just a they're a, a touch firmer than than some other one piece forgings. Uh, when you hit a dead flush, it's pretty powerful sounding. You get that good thud, but you also do get just a hair more audible sound to it uh, than than some other irons. Uh, when you miss it, you start to hear uh, a little more of that uh, that that sound. You get a little more click uh, as you move away from the center of the face, which is pretty standard. Uh, you still get a little bit of that click when you move towards the heel. With some irons, you don't get that. Uh, this one, you still do get a little firmness. Uh, and even if you hit it kind of low on the face, you're going to hear and sound and feel uh, a little more vibration with those shots, uh, which is pretty typical. This one, I feel like you get a little more uh, vibration and sound than, than, than some other irons. Uh, but it is very responsive when you hit it flush. It, it, it does feel good. Um, distance, the thing actually kind of feels like the ball's jumping on the face, and it kind of does. Um, out of all the seven irons I was kind of hitting uh, today, uh, the Mizar Tour is always typically the longest, that Vega. It just, for whatever reason, that face is, is like super hot. Uh, this had average carry, 158 with a seven iron, uh, and that matches the Mizar Tour, so, which is pretty, uh, pretty shocking because not many things really do match it. Um, but I will just say that the other thing that, one, I noticed, noticed that, one, very consistent, and two, the other thing was kind of how consistent some of the the, the shots were. Because, I mean, again, I don't delete a ton of stuff, um, but basically shots that went anywhere from uh, a pretty poor shot at 148, 149, had a couple of those, uh, all the way up to something that was really flushed at 160, 167, well, being the long. But handful of 165s. Um, when you hit it well, it's in the one, you know, it's well in the 160s, had a lot of 165, 164, 163, um, I topped out at 167 being the longest shot I hit with this. Uh, and then shots that you missed it actually still carried pretty well. I mean, 148s, 149s, uh, those were about that, that was as, as low as it went. Uh, and I had some shots that, it, it, you know, came down steep, got it off the toe, just kind of hitting down on it uh, and, and swinging across it, hitting it off the toe, and still those balls are flying 148, which I was shocked at. Uh, I, I think the first one I did, I, I thought for sure, I was like, well, that ball's going about 120 yards, uh, and, and it didn't. It went 148, which I was blown away because typically an iron like this, you're going to lose so much distance when you miss it out as far as I missed it uh, on this head. But I think that, that longer blade length, a little bigger blade length, gives it a little added stability, and it, and it kind of keeps that ball uh, up in the air. But uh, very consistent uh, in terms of distance. I mean, shots across the face, for the most part, thin, toe, and then dead center. Uh, you know, you're looking at not even 20 yards, uh, 19 yards of of, di of uh, variation, variation uh, which for kind of a one-piece forged, not like hollow body, thin face, whatever, I, I think it's pretty pretty darn good. Um, so carry 158, which is the same as my Mizar Tour, which, again, really kind of shocked at. Um, and then when you get into, let's get into spin rate. So when you get into spin with these, uh, average spin of 5,674, which I know kind of sounds a little low with a 7 iron, uh, but everything was around that. Uh, the Mizar Tour was just a hair higher at 5,682. So, I mean, 10 RPM uh, higher. And then even hitting uh, those 0317 CBs. Uh, and what was the other one I had out there? Oh, the um, the I-230s. I mean, everything was uh, 5,800, 5,735. So these did kind of spin the lowest. But uh, And then I had a, an old T-108 iron that was, you know, 6,200. So, I mean, uh, you know, number-wise, you know, we're still comparing kind of apples to apples when we're looking at these. But um, out on the course, I had no problem hitting them. Uh, hitting them, getting them to stop on the green, uh, distance control was was very very good. Uh, the quality of strike was the distance it went. Um, I never got any 165s uh, out on the course personally, uh, but I was easily routinely able to kind of average that out and hit it. You know, as my 160 club, this is what I pull out of the bag. This is what I'd hit, and I'd have no problem hitting that number. Uh, you know, virtually most of the time. Few of the misses, of course, you'd come up short of the green, and that that, that happens. Um, but distance on them uh, is good. Ball flight, initial ball flight is is they're pretty straight. Uh, if anything, they do want to maybe just fade a touch, and, they, and again, I think that longer blade length it just takes a little more to square it up at at uh, at impact. But uh, it it definitely gets to you know, go straight. If anything wants to maybe just fall just a little bit right, uh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't want to be a big hook machine, even with a little lighter steel shaft than it. Uh, it doesn't want to be a big hook machine or anything like that. It's it's a pretty precise and straight ball flight. Um, and then uh, with that ball speed on it, uh, it was basically uh, was 
So what one mile an hour slower than the Mizar Tour, uh, and about a mile an hour faster than I two thirty and the um, geez, well, I can't remember what I'm hitting out here. And this and the the PXG zero three one seven CB. So the PXG CB. So about a mile an hour, uh, almost a mile an hour faster than those, almost two, uh, really. And then just behind the Mizar Tour, which I think is kind of a canon in this category. Um, Smash factor on it one point three two. Again, right, just about the same as the other two. Uh, the Mizar Tour is 135, and the, the, the other two are 131s. So right in line there, but uh, pretty decent smash factor for a one-piece uh, forged iron. And then launch, uh, these did launch a little higher, uh, 19.5 degrees, uh, which was kind of right in the middle. Uh, the Mizar Tour kind of came out the lowest, uh, and then followed up by uh, these. And then uh, you jumped into, well, I don't even know that because I don't, I don't mark them well in here, but... Uh, the, the PXG uh, CB comes out uh, uh, next, and then the highest launching, uh, for me at least, was uh, the I-230. So, But these here, uh, easy to launch. When I get on the course, easy to get in the air, uh, especially off the turf. Uh, you know, off the tee, you can, get, of course, get them up a little higher, but off the turf, no problem hitting them high enough. Uh, they generate enough spin to, to land on the green, land soft, have a, a pretty minimal amount of, uh, of rollout, uh, which is nice. Uh, it is pretty controlled, even out of uh, you know out of the rough. Uh, you can get a ball that that kind of releases a little bit more, uh, but it's still pretty predictable. I mean, it's got a, a little more release than I thought it would have, but uh, something that I think if you're playing these irons is something is you know it's in your set. Uh, and it's just in your bag, you're going to get used to that pretty quickly. Um, you know, and I, and I don't know if it's just like a, a groove design thing or whatever, but uh, they, they had just a little bit of rollout more with with shots uh, out of the rough. Um, so the launch angle there, and then uh, Apex, as you would guess, you know, it actually was, uh, it actually was the highest. I'm kind of shocked. I thought it was going to be just, uh, you know, oh no, I'm sorry, the I-230 is the highest, but this is, comes in next at 92 feet uh, for a 7 iron, which is uh, is pretty good. That's about average. I went from 91 to 97. Or, or yeah, 91 and 97 with the, the four seven irons I was hitting. Um, this one coming in at at, uh, at 92, but um, really a, a, a shockingly impressive um, th- you know performance by these things. That uh, they had more you know more distance and uh, were still easy to get up in the air compared to uh, some of these other seven irons. But uh, you know feel on them is good. Overall, just a really good player's cavity back. You know if you're looking for something, it's a player's cavity. Maybe you don't want to go microscopically small. You want to have a little bit of uh, of club head there because you know you you miss it like I do a little bit. Um, you know this thing is is definitely worth looking at, and it's definitely something a little bit on the uh, the larger side without going to a big um, you know multi piece you know iron or something like that. You can kind of keep it simple, uh, get those kind of precise distance control while still having a, a little bit of forgiveness to it. But uh, a solid iron. Uh, I, I thought they performed really well. I know a lot of people probably don't even know they exist. Uh, so if you're someone who's looking for kind of that in-betweener, you know, you, you, you love the old blade days, but, you know, those are unfortunately long past you and your your life of work and kids and family and whatever you have, uh, it takes over. Uh, these here might be something worth looking at. You know, something that's a little more forgiving, still pretty long, can get back a little distance you might have lost uh, from the old blades. Uh, while still having a, a good player's look to them and uh, in a solid feel. So, uh, yeah, these are the new the Tour Edge Pro 723s, and uh, they did a nice job on these. They're, they're, they're really solid. So uh, if you go to, uh, I think it's just Tour Edge Golf, uh, touredge.com, go to Under Exotics, and uh, Under Exotics you'll see uh, they've got the, uh, the Pro 723s. So they don't label them under the C or the E category like the other irons. Um, they're just uh, the Pro 723s, but... Really a solid iron, uh, definitely uh, you know better than I expected, uh, and definitely longer than I expected. So go check them out on there, uh, and uh, you know see uh, see where you can try them out, and they're uh, they're pretty good. So and then you might have to uh, you need a different shaft though. You might have to do it yourself or let your club builder do it or whatever. So it's the only knock uh, I'm giving them. But um, but yeah, that's my show today. Uh, hopefully you guys have a good one. Hopefully you're playing this weekend. It's Father's Day, so uh, call your dad, tell him you love him. Um, and uh, if you can, play golf with him. Get out there and play and make some memories and all that. I always enjoy playing with my dad, so we'll do that uh, this weekend. We'll have some fun. And uh, unfortunately, my uh, my brothers won't be able to make it, but it's all right. We'll uh, we'll still have a good time, and we'll uh, we'll play a little golf. We'll knock it around and get frustrated with some bad shots. But uh, anyway, that's all I've got today. Hopefully you guys have a great weekend and uh, enjoy the U.S. Open. I'll be watching some of that as well. But let's have a good one, and uh, we'll talk next week.